There's a common argument on YouTube on whether content creators are one of two things. One, kind of a slave to the audience, uh, or two, the audience is kind of a slave to the creator. Not necessarily as severe as a slave, but the idea of saying that the creator is below the audience is the idea that you gained your audience and you had to earn your audience and you don't deserve your audience. And I agree with that entirely, but what comes along with that idea is that you have to make the content that makes your audience happy. And then on the other side, there's the idea that the audience is below the creator, where the creator can make whatever they want. They should make whatever they want because it's their channel and the audience should be okay with that. I think there should be some balance there. And I don't feel like making reptile videos right now, but I'm still gonna make plenty of them because I wanna balance it out. And I have a lot of fun ideas that are gonna keep me satisfied while still making reptile content. Cause I know most of you are here for reptile videos, but there's some that I wanna make for my own sake. Like this one, which is one I am making kind of for myself, but hopefully some of you will find it interesting or helpful. And that is how I made money as a teenager. Cause as of a few months ago, I'm officially no longer a teenager. I turned 12. One of the reasons I wanna do this video is because I made another video called How Much Money I Make Selling Reptiles. And basically the idea is I'm kind of documenting the whole process of cre trying to create a successful business. Uh, there's a creator that I used to watch every single day and that was Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V. Uh, he's a, mostly known as an entrepreneur, but he's also a pretty popular YouTuber where he has this really cool idea of documenting everything you do and making it public as you do it. And the idea is that one, you can look back and see everything you're doing. And two, it lets everyone around you and anyone that they that wants to watch can see you go through this process of building a project. Uh, not only does this market your own thing, but it also uh, helps kind of show them. And instead of just motivating or inspiring them, it actually shows them tactical advice of what does and doesn't work for certain projects. So basically because of this, I thought I would document everything that we do while creating the company Emerald Scales. And a lot of people, when they see these videos, they're like, wow, you made a successful reptile business and I wanna make one too. But the idea is that it's not successful yet. The idea is that it could fail at any moment, but I get to document it and show you the process so you can see in real, almost real time if it fails or not. So yeah, keep in mind that it's, I'm, I'm gonna keep doing that and I'm gonna do another update video on how much money I've made probably at the end of the year or maybe I'll even do one halfway through the year because I think it was really fun and uh, I will get to show you all the other stuff that I've documented throughout the, the time. But when I started the project Emerald Scales, it took money. The, the classic quote is it takes money to make money. And basically I had to invest a few thousand dollars into that project as a 17 year old. The question is, where did I get those few thousand dollars? So today, I'm, I'm gonna talk about all the weird ways I made money uh, from about age 13 to 19. And uh, I, I like talking about money. A lot of people don't like talking about money, but personal finance and business finance is kind of my favorite thing to research. I spend like all my free time um, studying finance. And this is something that I've done since I was really young. So I'm gonna talk about my total experience with this. And if you are 13 or even younger, um, or 19 or an adult, maybe you'll get something out of it. So I'm not necessarily gonna go in order of age, but uh, yeah, I was always just Googling how to make money as a 10 year old, how to make money as an 11 year old, and how to make money online and all these things. And there's lots of good content, but I'm gonna go over my full experience with that. So basically I was cleaning the house and as I remembered ways that I made money, I wrote a list. So it's completely out of order. And I'm gonna kind of start with the least effective way I tried to make money, which was buying cryptocurrency, which is basically internet money. It's not like United States dollar, and it's not like any other country's currency. Instead, it's completely digital, and you don't rely on banks to transfer your money. This means that it's completely public, it can't really be censored, and uh, just like how the internet, there's no base or central internet, there's no base or central uh, place for cryptocurrency, which is stuff like Bitcoin. And you probably heard about the bubble where it almost hit 20,000 United States dollar per one Bitcoin. And then a bunch of people made money, a bunch of people lost money. Uh, I bought $100 of Bitcoin just randomly. I sold it when it fell to $50 in my value. The, what you're not supposed to do while investing is buy high and sell low, but that's what I did because I got scared. Um, so now I do invest a lot more and I'll talk about that at the end because uh, now I'm a little bit better at it. And you can make money buying crypto, but personally I don't think it's a good way to make money. I think instead it will take over all other currencies and uh, I think it'll be super popular. I think it will likely 
destroy the US dollar, which I think would be a good thing. Not soon, but in our lifetime probably. But yeah, one of the dumb things I did was buy $100 in crypto and lose $50. Uh, the next worst thing that I did was survey sites. I would do them during class in high school. Um, there are things like Swagbucks was the one I used. And the idea is you fill out surveys for companies and they pay you up to $20 per survey, per survey that takes you like 20 minutes or something. Uh, in reality, these surveys will take you way longer and you don't make that much money. I would make like five bucks a month doing these. And I think I was, I would dedicate different classes to different things. For example, um, I think math class was survey class where I would fill out surveys and make a couple bucks here and there. And then like science class would be uh, researching class where I would research things that I was interested in like finance and making money and different things like that and then I don't remember what other classes are at school. Language arts would be like working on my blog class and stuff so I didn't I didn't really listen. Anyway I did surveys during classes and it's just a waste of time it's so not worth it and you get so much spam so I highly do not recommend doing survey sites although they can technically make you a little bit of money. Also you have to lie about your age because you have to be 18 so yeah, I lied about that too, but yeah. Okay, the next one was a very small one. This is one that I only did within my family. When I was like 10, 11, or 12, I heard that interest was a thing. For example, on a loan, you, you borrow some money, you pay 10% interest, meaning that if you loan $1,000, and then after a year you need to pay that back and pay them 10% interest, you give that person an extra $100 so that you got to borrow $1,000 and then they end up profiting $100 because you give them $1,100 back. And so I always had cash, all my money was in cash when I was a kid. Um, so what I would do is I would carry it around with me and whenever my parents needed some cash because they just used card, I would let them borrow my cash at a 10% interest rate. So if they needed 10 bucks to buy some food, they'd pay me back a dollar and I made like, less than $30 doing this. So that wasn't very profitable either. So charging your family interest for cash is not very effective, but I did make a couple dollars. The next thing was a fun one, that was Minecraft. I loved Minecraft. I spent all of my free time at school when I was 13 to 15 or so uh, on Minecraft, working on my Minecraft server. Uh, sometimes you have to, you know, work around the, the school blocks and stuff, but uh, recess, break, lunch, a uh, little bit of time after school, well, all my time after school, was spent working on my server. And as much as I loved playing Minecraft, I much more preferred managing a community. Um, the server started very small, obviously. I started it with just by myself, and then over time I had different online friends that helped me with it and really helped me build it up. Uh, not to a big server, it wasn't like Hypixel or something, but at its peak there were about 20 recurring players at any given time, and I was, I was super happy with that. It was very cool popping on and finding dozens of people at any given moment on my server. So at the peak we had about 5,000 recurring members coming on and off the server, and it, not only was it super fun, it was also some of the best skills I learned. I learned a lot about managing a team, like kind of like an employee staff team. I learned a lot about community management. I learned a lot about just design in general. It's Minecraft, you're gonna learn about architecture automatically. And if you've played Minecraft, you've probably learned a lot of things from it. But one of the other things that I learned was e-commerce and digital products. Uh, as you probably know, you can spend a lot of money on Minecraft. This money's not going towards Minecraft, but it's going towards Minecraft servers. Uh, my favorite server was Minecade. Frick you, Minecade, I got banned because my account was ha hacked and, uh, and, and they hacked on the server and got my account banned. I spent $100 on Minecade uh, for two premium ranks for me and my sister. Uh, and you got a bunch of really cool perks. There was a game called Super Craft Bros based on Super Smash Bros. And you got these like really cool kits to play with and you got like a fancy name and you could like jump twice as high and stuff. And it was $50, it was a one-time payment. And so I modeled mine after this. I found a friend who became the developer of the server who was quite good at coding. And um, he designed us a, com a game completely from scratch called Kit PVP, which I'm sure it's not an original name. But basically you got these really cool kits to play with and PVP, which is player versus player or um, fighting and battling others to the death. And we had, I think three ranks. The server was called Emerald Jungle. Um, which, yes, is what I named Emerald Scales afterwards. The server had a gold rank, which was like five bucks, and then it had a diamond rank, which was 15 bucks, and it had an emerald rank, which was 30 bucks. 
Uh, each rank came with some different things. You got your name on a plaque and you got to pick the color of your name. And then the Emerald one gave you extra kits for the game. And the server changed a lot. It wasn't always kit PVP, but it was just a bunch of different things. And uh, for example, when it was creative, you'd get extra plots of land. And when it was survival, you'd get extra items and stuff. And we basically got to build these digital products where you pay a one-time payment and you get all these super cool perks. And it was very popular. I made hundreds of dollars as a 13 to 15 year old, and it was very exciting. I'd say on average, we sold one rank per week or so. So we might make up to $100 a month. And uh, the server was not free to run. I used to run it on my personal laptop on my parents' internet. Little did they know how much I was putting their internet at risk because I was not even covering up the IP. It wasn't the private IP, but it was close enough and you could probably track me down. So eventually I started actually paying other companies to uh, run the server and this saved me a ton of time. The internet ran faster and the server was up at all times because if I had to work on the server or if I had to just reboot my computer or the internet, the whole server would go down. Um, so yeah, I kind of learned that you can invest some money and then make more back because I invested money into uh, paying other companies to run my server and then I get to spend that extra time running a better server and a more productive and efficient server. I ran the server for about three years maybe, two or three years, kind of on and off, and then eventually at the end uh, I took all the money that I had made from it and I just simply let the server run until it died. So yeah, when I was like 15 we, I had maybe three or four hundred dollars saved up from the server and I really loved it but it was becoming less popular and I was putting less time into it because I was working on a new project which I'll get into in a minute. And so I, people were really loving the server still and all my closest friends literally just talked on the server. Um, but the coolest way that I made money was unbans. We had rules on the server like any server did, like no griefing where you destroy things on the server. Uh, no fly hacks or no x-ray hacks or anything like that. If you get caught, then you will be banned. Uh, not, no spamming the server, no excessive swearing or cursing because kids played on it, stuff like this. Um, and we were pretty strict and we had a team of moderators who would deal with it. And I got to manage those moderators who were entirely unpaid. Um, so they never got to see any of the money. Actually, I think I sent them like $10 dividends one time. They didn't know how much the server was making, so I kind of, I took most of the money. But they were just on there for fun anyway. Uh, but the idea was for $10, you could get unbanned from the server. Doesn't matter what you did. You could have spammed slurs, you could have bullied someone into oblivion, you could have hacked and destroyed the entire server. I always had backup, so it didn't matter. No matter what you did, 10 bucks and you're back. Um, <laughs> as a 13 year old, I made a pretty penny from unbans. Um, they didn't happen very often. It was maybe once a month someone would pay for an unban, but that's an extra 10 bucks just for letting someone back on the server. One person even got banned twice and they paid for unbans both times. I'd say that's some fun capitalism. And eventually we made the ranks cheaper. The Emerald rank became $15. And then eventually I think it became a monthly thing. It was like five bucks a month or something. Uh, so yeah, a lot of people really loved the ranks and we just did that through PayPal. It was a free Wix site I was running and uh, I just bought the URL, emeraldjungle.net, it was like 12 bucks. And people would pay for the ranks and we'd add it to them. And that was really fun. And over time, the server just tapered off to the point that it eventually closed. So that was really fun. And that was one of the most fun ways I made money. Uh, total, like I said, I ended up reinvesting all the money simply until I ran out and then I closed the server. Uh, so it kind of just decided its own death. But in revenue, I probably made like a thousand bucks. I didn't keep track, I didn't pay taxes on it. I was 13, okay? Don't, please don't report me. Next up is one that everyone thinks of, and that is stuff for neighbors. From ages nine and up, I moved to a pretty nice neighborhood and there were people that needed stuff done. So I started advertising uh, by putting flyers in everybody's mailboxes. Uh, I just went on my bike with a bunch of printed out flyers for different services I was offering. And technically it's illegal to open other mailboxes. Again, I was a kid. When you're a kid, you can get away with certain things. Um, and I just spammed every single mailbox every month with these flyers, uh, mostly with dog walking and pet sitting. And I got very few clients, but I got a good client. And that was conveniently my next door neighbor. Since I couldn't drive, this was really nice and really easy. And they happened to travel a ton for work. So this month that I was over there pretty often walking their dog, and feeding it and pet sitting it. Uh, it had some special needs, so they knew that I was a trustworthy person because I already had some pets myself and they'd already talked to me. So it worked out pretty well. They showed me how to like give her the vitamins that she needed and everything and the supplements. 
and she got really long walks and it was really fun. And if I just gave the dog one walk, it was $5. Uh, so she was walked three times a day. And then if they let me watch her for a whole day, they'd give me 10 bucks a day, which was really good. Cause one time they went away for eight days and I made $80 just for walking the dog three times a day and uh, feeding her and stuff. So it probably equated out to about $3 an hour. And I was very happy with that at that age. Being able to trade your time for money is a really cool feeling. And uh, unfortunately, the dog died, so I lost my client. She just got old over time, but there were some other little things I did. One neighbor asked me to watch his garden a few times when he would travel, and uh, he'd pay me like $50 just to water his garden for a week. He was a bit further, it was like a five minute bike ride. Um, I can't complain with that. I thought that was pretty good. I was such a stupid kid that I forgot to water it for a whole week one time, and he still paid me half the money. He was wondering why his plants were so dry and that was really awkward, but. Although I loved lawn mowing my own lawn, I was kind of too scared to touch other people's lawns because these were really nice lawns and I didn't really know what I was doing. But one of the neighbors that knew us better uh, had me mow his lawn a couple times while he was gone. And I think that was 40 bucks or something. It was like $20 per lawn. That's a, that's, that seems expensive. Uh, when I mowed our own lawn, my parents would give me two bucks for comparison. So I was happy with that two bucks too because it was good outside time and I enjoy mowing lawns. Next up, we're gonna get into some of my other favorites and these are things that kind of spawned into what I am still doing. The first one was eBay flipping. eBay flipping is the idea of finding products that are worth money, getting them for little money, and selling them for more money. How I started was going into our attic and finding my own items. I used to be kind of a pretty big materialist as a kid and I would acquire a lot of items and once I started learning about minimalism I really wanted to get rid of a bunch of stuff. So I started selling the stuff on eBay for the highest amounts I could. I really got to learn about shipping and uh, that whole process and a little bit of customer service when customers weren't necessarily happy. The first thing I sold were three video games uh, as a bundle, PS2 games that I didn't want. And I forgot to think about the shipping price. So I made about $1 after shipping. I meant to make like $12, but I had to ship them to like Washington State or something. So although that sucked, um, I got a better idea, kind of pivoted a little bit, and realized that I should include shipping. Uh, eBay really prefers items that do not have shipping costs, so it's best to include the shipping price and the actual product price, and then have free shipping. But yeah, I went through just all my stuff and tried to get rid of as much as I could to liquidate and get some cash. I think my best return was uh, some speed stacks. This will be a little bit of a side tangent, but speed stacks or sport stacking is something you've probably seen once or twice. It's where you move a bunch of cups really fast and uh, in different formations. And I got into it because of YouTube. Um, I am a Skrillex fan. Now Skrillex has a song where a girl screams yes, oh my gosh, you've probably heard the song. Yes, oh my God! And I actually discovered Skrillex through the person who did that sound bite. And it was a girl that was a really good speed stacker and I was watching her. That clip got really popular and I was watching her before that clip even uploaded and then once that clip uploaded uh, Skrillex used it on his song and then I found Skrillex and I was like oh I'm a Skrillex fan too so fun fact I became a Skrillex fan through speed stacking but I got out of speed stacking after a few years and that was also one of my other YouTube channels um, I it still exists so my speed stacking videos are still on the internet I, I was pretty fast I wasn't world record speed but I was better than most I would say. But anyway, I don't speed stack anymore. And uh, I had a pro set that was discontinued and I was able to sell it for like two or three times the price that I bought it for. So that was pretty cool because some items appreciate when you're owning them simply for letting them sit and exist. Eventually I ran out of items um, in our house and I was pretty minimal at that point and that felt good. So then I started going to other places that I could buy items. First, I tried yard sales. Uh, it was hard to find. This is actually something else Gary Vaynerchuk has a series on called Trash Talk. I did, I did this a few years before he did that series, but um, yeah, I didn't have much luck at yard sales around here. So I started going to thrift stores mostly, at like Goodwill and stuff like that. And uh, it's good to find your specialty when you're flipping items on eBay, because you really need a good score on eBay. You want the people that buy to leave you really good reviews or it's really gonna damage your eBay store. Um, so you need to kind of make sure you specialize and really understand what you're selling. Uh, for example, a lot of people do 
expensive but unpopular clothing brands. Not stuff like Gucci and Supreme, but you need to find brands that Goodwill wouldn't actually know is worth money. Then when you go to Goodwill, you can find those nice brands and sell them for a lot more because Goodwill will sell them pretty much everything for a flat rate. If you don't know clothes like me, you could do shoes, which I also don't know. You could do toys, you could do stuffed animals. Uh, you can just find something that you know. And if you don't know, you just start doing the research. My specialty was DVD players. Very specific and very niche, but uh, I noticed that there were a lot of super cheap DVD players because they don't really test them and you can't really test them at the store. So what I would do is I would go around to the different Goodwills and I personally would buy every single CD and DVD player that looked to be in okay condition. Uh, I would then bring it back home, test CDs in it, make sure it works, throw away the ones that didn't work, and just to be safe, check it for bugs. Um, bugs really love technology, especially when it's been sitting in garages and stuff, so you're likely going to find some cockroaches. But check it for that before you list them and ship them. Once I knew they worked, I would clean them up, I would research the product, take a bunch of nice pictures with just some simple lamps and try to find a white spot in the house, kind of like a white backdrop. You can use a sheet or a pillowcase or something the product to photograph the products and then uh, I would list them on eBay. Personally I like to list them for seven days at a time, uh, free shipping, and I hated the bidding process so I always just do buy it now and uh, do not allow offers usually. So that, that was just my preference for the DVD players. And then once they sold, they were very expensive to ship because they were super heavy and bulky so you gotta kind of find the best ways to ship. Normal rule of thumb, if it's under 10 pounds, do it with USPS if you're in the United States. If it's over 10 pounds, do FedEx or UPS. I usually do FedEx. And then uh, if it's over 12 inches, you will likely want to do FedEx as well. Uh, since they were so big, I normally tried to stick to FedEx, but I also did USPS. And uh, eBay gives you good deals on labels as well because they partner with these companies. So yeah, uh, just make sure you figure out how much it'll cost to ship around different areas before you list it. And I made probably a few hundred dollars off DVD players, and I was very happy with that return. Um, I also sold some stuffed animals. Um, what else? I just did random items. So if I could find good tech in good condition, because I know tech pretty well, I think. Um, but collectible stuff, whatever. Try it out, it's fun. I would do it a lot more if I had time, because it's just, even if you make five bucks per item, it's really rewarding to go find items not worth much and turn it into literal cold hard cash or PayPal money, so yeah. Uh, and I think the ironic part, or not ironic, I overuse the word ironic. The funny part about flipping stuff is it's kind of what I still do um, because a lot of people call me an animal flipper. When people say it, they mean it in a derogatory way, which is okay too, but technically, the literal definition, I was an animal flipper. If you watched my other video, we'd buy reptiles from Craigslist, make sure they're healthy, and sell them. Uh, and that's the very simple breakdown of it, but I'd recommend you watch the other video to learn more about that. Something else I flipped was reptile supplies, and this was something that I um, actually flipped because I had the kind of following from uh, YouTube. And I will talk about building YouTube a bit in this video, because I was 12 when I started it, and then uh, was 13 and a teenager as I grew, so yeah. But flipping is pretty fun. Next one. This one is gonna sound bad, and that is drop shipping. The reason drop shipping probably sounds bad is you've likely gotten advertisements that say how to make $50 billion a year selling on Amazon.com. Uh, you maybe even gotten that on this video on Hold on guys, don't don't click off of this advertisement because I just made 50 grand. I'll sell it on Amazon. And that's what I'm going to talk about and what they're talking about is drop shipping. The idea is you buy really cheap stuff from China in bulk, ship it off to Amazon and then sell it for a really high price. Basically everything on Amazon is drop shipped from China. I don't think this is a bad thing. I mean, just look at Target. Most stuff in Target is from China. The difference is Target owns the manufacturing companies usually or is works with them a lot closer, like look at Up and Up or something, or their other brands that they sell. Uh, those are Target brands that are really cheap for them to make, and they, they sell it. Amazon is more of a crowdsourced version of that, where instead of Amazon making the stuff, which they do have the company Amazon Basics now, and I really like that brand. I, they make quality stuff, surprisingly. Like, even the cords that I'm using are for Amazon Basics, and I have like dishes from Amazon Basics and towels and stuff. But anyway, everyone else that sells on Amazon is usually 
stuff is drop shipped from China. And I thought I would try it out. What I was gonna do is backpacks, but every single backpack I could find on every Chinese site, most commonly DHgate and Alibaba, which you've probably heard of at least one of those, uh, they're all already for sale by multiple sellers. So I tried to find something that I could market well. Um, and I decided to do car emblems, specifically exercise car emblems. Very specific. It took me maybe a week or two to actually find this product that I was gonna do. And I ended up doing uh, these little silver plastic emblems. It was a biker and a weightlifter. I just bought dozens and dozens of them. And it took them a few weeks to arrive straight from China. And uh, what I did is I, I didn't actually want them on my car. So I used tape to stick it to my car and then took product images. And then I took them off my car and I shipped them all to the Amazon warehouse. Basically, there's a whole process. It took me maybe a week of learning to learn the whole process because uh, they actually need barcodes and everything. So I learned how the barcodes worked. I ordered barcodes, which were a few dollars. I printed out the barcodes, stuck them to the product, and then shipped these items off to Amazon. The Amazon warehouse then processed them after a few weeks and they just sit in the warehouse and it's then your job to sell them. Uh, they go up on Amazon on the listing, you choose the price, Amazon takes a portion, they took like 20% or something, and uh, they kind of push it up so you try to use good keywords and stuff. But I put them on Amazon and my marketing strategy was pretending to be a customer. <laughs> when I started to do this, this was less common to do. Now I think more people have caught on and started doing it. I had never seen anyone do this, so I thought I was pretty clever. Uh, for the bike one, what I would do is I... <laughs> Okay, this is gonna sound bad at first, but as you probably know, old people are pretty vulnerable on the internet and are the most easy to convince. So I knew they wouldn't be suspicious that I was actually the seller instead of a customer. So I pretended to be a 70 year old man. I made a fake uh, Facebook account and I joined a biker group called 55 year old bikers and older or something like that. And I, it was near Christmas when I did this, which I did on purpose because Christmas is the best time to sell on Amazon. And I made a post saying, got myself a little early Christmas gift, thought I'd show you it, cause I think it's pretty cool. And it was a different image that I did not put on Amazon of the arrived emblem that I bought on the car. And uh, instead of linking it, because that's obvious, I let someone ask for the link. And then once someone asked, I said, yeah, I got it on Amazon. I, th I think it's this one. And I linked it and uh, they sold out instantly. <laughs> I got them for like two bucks a piece. And I think I sold them for 12 to $15 a piece on Amazon. And then um, for the weightlifting one, I used Reddit. I made a fake Reddit account, but I made sure to add some stuff to it first so it doesn't look like a spam account. And then I posted it in weightlifting subreddits. Same thing, got myself an early Christmas gift. Uh, I was pretty sure no one would really ask where I got it on Reddit because nobody really cares on Reddit. So I then made a second account and posted some stuff. And I said, oh cool, where'd you get it? And then with my first account, I responded saying, I think it's from here and I linked them, which was me, the product, and then those sold out. So that was really fun. I made like 300 bucks in a couple weeks of researching how dropshipping works. And that's the idea. The problem is it's super saturated now and everyone drop ships everything. And this was only a couple years ago, but uh, I think it was 2018 or 2019 maybe. I think it was 2018. It won't be easy to find products that have not been tapped into, but a great way you can do it is find local people, local places that sell unique products that other people won't know exist or access because anyone can access Alibaba, but people can't access that quirky local shop that sells some interesting products. They can sell at a higher price. Um, yes, it's illegal to rebrand something as yours if it already has a branding and everything. It is not illegal to resell an item at a higher price. Uh, also, you can, you can bundle and merge products and that'll make it sure that you're protected from stealing someone's product and claiming it as your own. So uh, for the most part, these products on China, in China are made to be branded by you. So I came up with a fake brand. It was called Spin Express, which is a, a name from Adventure Time. And uh, Express is a common word to put at the end. So yeah, I had a little Amazon shop for a bit. I also sold reptile products on Amazon for a while. So similar with the used products there. But dropshipping definitely works and I wanted to do it more, but I had other avenues that were making me more money and I just didn't have the time to seek out more products. But it works, it's legitimate, but it is very difficult because it's such a saturated area. And then of course you have that initial um, money you have to put into that one because you are buying products. So that's a little different. Next up, we've got used reptile supplies. About a half a year before I started Emerald Scales, I started buying reptile products instead of reptiles. 
I'd find like supplies and enclosures on Craigslist. For example, if I wanted a new enclosure, a lot of people just sell everything at once if their animal dies. So I'd find listings from people, say their bearded dragon just died, they'd sell a 40 gallon with like 10 products, like um, some hides and some lamps and all this stuff. And I would buy it all and then I'd use the enclosure and then I would clean up all the supplies. I would bleach stuff, uh, hand wash everything. I probably could use a dishwasher, but I, for some reason I hand washed it all. And then I sold it on actually goherping.com. Uh, I did not make much money doing this because it was took so much time to find reptile products because it's such a niche thing. But I made a lot of really cool marketing for it personally. I had some little ads for it and uh... People really liked the idea, but I ended up draining all of Craigslist around me and bought like all the reptile supplies. I even started buying stuff in bulk from eBay uh, to resell that was used. And it was clearly marked as used on my site, but I would just hit every brand that I could. And I sold bulbs, hides, uh, even substrate that was unopened, a ton of stuff. That was a fun way to kind of get into selling reptile products, which I eventually did more because I ended up selling reptiles. Um, and we sell even more stuff now. So yeah, I literally only made a few hundred dollars even though I made thousands in revenue just because it was so expensive and so time consuming to do all this. And now I'll kind of loop around because I am going in a weird order, but I'm going to talk about one of the first projects that I made and that was called ncnaturenews.wordpress.com, which still exists. And it was a nature blog. Um, I was going to kind of document the nature and animals around me. And when I started NC Nature News, I was 12, yeah, 12. And I did not make any money on this. I didn't plan on making money, but I thought like as my dream goal, it would be to become a competitor of National Geographic and BBC Earth. Or not even a competitor, but just that kind of thing. I wanted to make this big network that everybody knew all about nature and animals, kind of like an animal planet or something like that with articles and videos and all this stuff. So I started making this blog and it, it again the purpose was not to make money and I'm sure I'll do more videos actually talking about this growth and it was basically while I was making this project that I was doing all these other little money making strategies as a teenager um, to where to the point where I was 15 I started making money from NC Nature News um, I never wanted to put ads on blogs or anything but I started uh, making more YouTube videos and eventually I could monetize the videos once I was like 15 or 16. Actually, I could have monetized it at any point because now there's a threshold uh, for monetizing on YouTube. I think it's a thousand subs and 4,000 watch hours. At the time, there was no threshold. You could do it at any time, but I didn't really want to put ads on the videos. I even have an email I sent my mom because she had to approve of it since I wasn't 18 yet. And uh, so I still have that email. I guess that's kind of proof that I didn't really want to put ads, but I thought it'd be cool to make a few dollars. On average, I would make one to two pennies per day and eventually that became 25 cents per day. And then the more I grew, that became 50 cents a day and then a dollar a day. And then I was making almost $100 a month. And uh, as I grew this, I was always aware that ad revenue is very iffy. Um, and uh, so I needed to be careful and I wanted to make other avenues. So one of those other avenues I did was products and merchandise. Uh, the first thing I sold was Go Herping posters, which I actually still have some of, and I ended up selling these for years. It was just a nice high quality poster that I designed myself after photographing my animals, and I sold those on the site. And then I, more recently, a couple years ago, started actually making t-shirts and merchandise, and this was super fun. It was a painful process to learn because it was very hard to perfect it. I had to find a source for the clothing and the merchandise, and then I had to find a source for the vinyl because I didn't want to buy a vinyl cutter because that was thousands of dollars, or maybe they're not that much actually. Whatever it was, it was the equivalent of that at that time because they were pretty expensive. And then I got a heat press and I got to work. And um, to date, I ended up printing over a thousand shirts and selling them all, so that was really cool. Originally, I was using sites like represent.com, which I actually use now. That was the first thing I used, and now it's what I use. And in between, I printed myself, because I made about 30 to 40% more per item when I printed it myself. 
Now, because I am able to make more doing other things, I outsource that, so I do lose that 30 to 40%. It's okay, because I make it in other places, so yeah. Basically, I went from flipping items to making my own items, and it was super fun. I'd pay people for the designs, and I really love t-shirt printing, and it's, it's really fun, and I would love to do it again. Just almost as a hobby, even. It's so painstakingly painful, because I messed up so many shirts. I messed up dozens and dozens, and it took so much practice, and I lost hundreds of dollars learning, probably upwards of a thousand, uh, but I certainly made that back pretty well. And uh, I was doing this in my bedroom. I got to the point where I was working on so many, I didn't have space for a bed, so I was sleeping on the floor, um, but I was making money from the shirts, so that was really cool. It was really fun, and I love t-shirt printing, so I'd like to do that again at some point, but I had to take a break from that because I just didn't have time for it, so. And again, as I was doing all these different projects, I was just, I kept researching how to make money, how to market, how to do all these things, mostly through YouTube videos. But again, I did pretty much all this during classes and YouTube was blocked at school. So I had to mostly read articles and blogs. Uh, Cause if I had earbuds in while the teacher was talking, it'd be a little obvious. So I would usually, you know, do the quick control tab switch. Yeah, you, you just, you just got to fake type while you're reading, act like you're taking notes, but you're actually learning how to make money. <laughs> and then at the same time, I would be posting on social medias and I would be sending out newsletters and all this stuff. Cause the same way that I put uh, flyers in my neighbor's mailboxes as a kid, I also put flyers for ncnaturenews.com and NC Nature News became Go Herping. Uh, I just changed the name eventually, so I forgot to mention that before. But yeah, NC Nation News was this channel, and it's changed a ton. And to get my first, like, hundred signups, I, uh, without permission, emailed the entire school a link to sign up. And I, without permission, put flyers in all of my neighbor's mailboxes, and I got a few dozen from that. Uh, and I would literally put flyers every month. Like, here's the new stuff on the NC Nation News that you do not care about at all, but please sign up to my mailing list. And again, the mailings didn't make any money, but I knew that the more audience I had, the better potential for the future. So that's what I did there. And I still have that same mailing list. It's changed a lot too. You can sign up. I don't really promote it anymore, uh, but people still sign up. And I still send out uh, emails every week or so. And there's now 20,000 people on that newsletter. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, that was just one of my ways to market what I was doing. And I did sell a couple tiny products early on. Uh, like I made little books from paper on like about reptiles and I would sell those online. I also had a series called Five Minutes of Peace. They're still on the channel, some of my oldest videos. It was like ASMR nature sounds uh, before ASMR was cool. and they were five minutes long and I would go to different locations and film audio bits and then merge them with video clips that I filmed in the location. Uh, oftentimes I was literally just hitting record on the camera, shooting a single frame for five minutes and uploading it with the audio. And uh, I made a five minutes of peace CD, which was the extended edition, one hour long nature sounds. I have an ad for that as well. Nature of Fall, five minutes of peace extended edition. It has three tracks, including Fall Afternoon, Autumn Shower, and Trickling Creek. You can put it in your computer, in your stereo. and in the car. And I sold a total of one of those, uh, but I would burn the CDs myself with a DVD burner thing that we had hooked up to the family computer. And then I designed a case and everything. So yeah, I just played around with a bunch of little things and saw what did and didn't work. But uh, yeah, early on, I always tried to give someone a quality product if they were to give me money for what I was doing. So I did, however, accept donations at festivals that I would go to because the festivals are pretty expensive. They were a few hundred dollars to go to where I would literally just market what I was doing and educate people on reptiles. I'd have a sign up list for the newsletter and get a bunch of email signups. Uh, one time I even, if you signed up, I'd donate 25 cents to an organization 
Uh, I would do a different animal organization each time, and that would get an extra like 20 signups every time I did a festival. So it was really, it wasn't just a matter of sitting back on YouTube hoping people would find it. I was literally putting flyers in mailboxes and uh, at festivals getting signups. So again, not with the goal to make money right on, but maybe someday it would become something bigger that could be some, some part of my livelihood or something. And uh, so far so good. But I'm always concerned that ad, ad revenue, for example, it's gonna crash someday. It crashes all the time. My ad revenue personally is about 60 to 70% lower now just because of the virus. Because uh, advertisers are trying to be conservative with their money. And due to that, they're not giving much to YouTube to promote their advertisements. So yeah, that's an example where a lot of people are having trouble because they're making 70% less than they did a month ago, completely out of nowhere. And the same thing's happening to me, but the difference is uh, you don't sweat it, like I'm not sweating it, if you really work to build other revenue sources. So, so I don't say that to try and flex on you, but I say that to try and remind you that advertisement can go down at any point. So you should try and have other revenue sources. And I'm constantly building more, and that's what I was trying to do as I grew NC Nature News to go herping uh, while doing all these little other money income things. And that's why we started Emerald Scales, for example. So yeah, that was, that's a bunch of the different things we made on the way. Now what I do is I still plan on starting other projects and stuff, but right now I'm still focused on Emerald Scales the most as the project, the top project other than YouTube. It goes YouTube, Emerald Scales, and then other personal finance stuff like investing and saving. Because saving's a pretty good way to make money. It's, it's not spending money. <laughs> um, I would like to think I'm pretty frugal, although I splurge in certain areas. I try not to spend in others. And I actually did a whole Twitter thread on uh, my what I do. But yeah, if you want, you can check out that. It's like 50 tweets on a mega thread of how I currently manage my money. And that's investing in different areas. And investing's very weird and all over the place. So I will not talk about that in this video. But those are the ways that I made money as a teenager. Survey sites, which are dumb. Trying to buy crypto, but I was dumb. eBay flipping, super fun. Drop shipping, it works, but it's kind of hard sometimes. Uh, making products, reselling products. I already said that. Stuff for neighbors, like dog walking and lawn mowing. The classic stuff that you hear, like lemonade stands, for example, which I did a couple of, but I didn't actually make any money from other than like $5 uh, when I was like super young. And then stuff like even Minecraft. So although Minecraft is not really a it's still a very popular game. It's not so much the kind of thing you can make a bunch of money from. So even though Minecraft isn't like the top game now, I'm sure there's comparisons that you can do with other games now. Uh, but I will admit Minecraft was a pretty great era. So sorry if you missed that boat. And so then, yeah, once I was like 16, that's when I was like, okay, I'm gonna do focus on all of this because I'm now making enough. And by the time I was 15, I maybe saved up like $2,000 or something after all those years of uh, little projects. and. I was then able to put that in Emerald Scales. Still haven't seen a big return, but thankfully uh, my other projects that I'm doing now have seen good returns, like YouTube for example. It's still my biggest focus and maybe at some point I'll get into that, but for five plus years I was making less than $100 a month on YouTube. And uh, then eventually now I've made more than $100 a month, so that's pretty cool. But are you a teenager? What are you doing to make money? Are you interested in making money? Uh, are you researching? I definitely recommend researching a bunch of stuff to do it, but be very skeptical because anyone that ever tries to make you pay to tell you how to make money is simply making money through you. They're not making money over how they teach you to do it. Like a drop shipper, they don't drop ship anymore. They just get money from that you're giving them so they can tell you about drop shipping. I've never paid to learn how to make money. Just Google all the free information. Please don't pay for it. Tons of free YouTube content, so. Yeah, don't do that. But remember that it's not gonna be simple and it's gonna be complicated and annoying, frustrating. I gave up on a lot of stuff. I wanted to give up on a lot of others and you won't see big returns on things. You'll even lose a lot of money on things. But I think that's why it's great where if you are a teenager, you can start early and play around with your money um, and you can see what does and doesn't work on how to multiply it and turn it into more money. Because even me, I don't have like the goal to make X number of dollars. I just wanna be able to have money saved up. So when I have future projects, I have the ability to do it without like getting a loan or something. Money is one of my favorite topics. I'd love to do more videos on it, but I wanna spread them out so I don't flood you out with money videos and hopefully you enjoyed this one. So leave other suggestions for teens or any age below on how to make some money. And uh, this is just what I did personally that I can 
talk for or talk against, and I'm sure I forgot some, but those are the main ones. So thanks for watching this video. If you want to give me some money, you can uh, support me on Patreon. I'm going to start live streaming more there. I've done a couple. I did a Sims live stream. It went terribly. I don't know how to play Sims. It was Sims 4. I did my best, but uh, yeah, stuff like live streams, uh, early access videos, uh, private Discord server, and a bunch of stuff like that. So I suggest you check it out. And that's another revenue stream. So also I did this whole video sitting on a bucket because I can't find a chair that's the right height, so my back really hurts. And that'll be it for this video. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.